Hi everyone, this is Dr. Siddhaling. I am expert in machine learning and data science. Uh, today we are going to see how do we perform uh, check the performance metrics uh, of a time series data for the LSTM model. And we will use the oil data in order to perform the LSTM model data fitting and then go for computing the various performance metrics. So what are the different metrics we are going to see today? One is mean absolute error. So it is also represented as MAE. This can be computed with the help of, let me take the pen. So it can be uh, take, mm, the method that is given by the scalar. So that is mean absolute error. So I can use MAE. So basically it gives the absolute uh, difference between the actual value to the predicted value. So when you take the difference between that absolute difference and take the sum of that, that's what the MAE is representing. And the next uh, metric, performance metric, is the mean square error. Now, uh, the mean squared error can also be computed by the method that is supplied by the SKLR metric module. So the mean squared error, MSC. So this is basically the difference between the observed value and the predicted value, but you take the square of that. When you take the square of that, when the difference between the predicted and the actual value is more, the more weight is given and thereby it is going to be uh, reflected in the MSE. When we take the overall sum of that, when the difference is more, that is going to be uh, re reflected there. Now, we have taken the square of these each individual differences. One way to get back to the original units is taking the root of that square root of the whatever the value we have computed so that is also called as rmse root mean square error that is computed with the help of taking the square root that is applied by the math module and uh, that you just take the uh, square root of the mse so it is represented using the equation over here so just take the square root of the mse and two more uh, performance metrics we are going to see. They, they are very useful when you are comparing the performance metrics of two different models and how do we check out which one has to be selected. One is called as R2 square. So this can be computed with the help of the method R2 score uh, supplied by the metric uh, module of a scalar. So again, we can utilize that. So this is represented using an equation over here. So this R2 score is one minus uh, the sum of square of difference between the actual and the predicted uh, value. So this is what is first one divided by sum of square of Y and Y bar is the average of observed value. So the difference between Y actual value to the observed value. So this usually gives between the value between 0 to 1. So the R2 square is usually between 0 and 1. The value, if it is uh, towards 0, it is the low performance of the method. And if it is uh, towards 1, th that is the better performance. So based on the value, you can check it out whether it is the model is performing better or not. Now, one difficulty with the R2 square, it does not take the number of features, input feature used to uh, build the uh, our uh, model. So if we have more number of um, uh, features or less number of features, that is not going to be reflected in the R2 square. So there is one more uh, technique that is called as adjusted R2 square. So this takes the number of uh, observation, the number of uh, observations that are used along with the number of independent or the number of features which are used to build the model. So independent features or independent variable that are used to build. So this will uh, penalize if we have more number of uh, features we used to build the model. So with this one, let's go ahead and check it out. How do we uh, actually do the coding part of this? Let me open the coding uh, in uh, Spider. Now, various uh, modules are uh, imported such as NumPy and we will use the sequential deep learning model. So therefore, we will, I have uh, taken the sequential. The LSTM, this performance model is uh, used, it can be used for many other uh, deep learning time series uh, performance analysis. 
so as an example i have taken the lstm over here dropout is a another layer and dense is the final layer that can be used and pen, pandas is to uh, read the data matplotlib is to plot the various uh, curves that we are what we are going to see uh, when we have generated the data and uh, here a standard is the pre-processing uh, step that we are applying on the time series data followed by uh, these uh, three different metrics so is that sk learns applying so the first one method is uh, mean absolute error then followed by mean squared error then r2 score and we will also use the square root operating system os uh, also model also i have uh, imported so these two uh, f functions i have defined in order to uh, display the curves so when we have plotted we want to plot the curves we can make use of these two functions so the data is present at the uh, um, uh, the particular location then we can change our current location with the help of chdir that is the method that is uh, given by the os now uh, the next line is to read the data using the read csv uh, the complete uh, oil data is read and creating the uh, let me run this part and check it out what is the type of uh, data that it is creating so we can see uh, df oil it is the data frame uh, consisting of uh, two columns one is for the date another one is for the price and also very important to take a look at various uh, range of the value so you can see it is between uh, maybe uh, 40 the lowest value we have to check it out and then uh, uh, 70 uh, this is the range near or about 60 70 like that so that's very important it is not between 0 1 so that's what i want to say and we can display some head information so that a uh, few samples taking from the uh, original data frame so these are some of the samples that are uh, shown over here now uh, i can display this entire uh, curve the time series curve using the plot curve so these two uh, it will uh, display the complete curve now you can see the maximum value maybe around going around uh, 78 or something over here and then lowest value is below 30 so this is between uh, 25 to 78 somewhere so this we can check it out 76.1 and this value is near about 26.7 so this is not between 0 and 1 now when we want to apply the uh, go for training with the lsdm we need to convert into standard uh, scalar so we will apply the normalization with the help of the standard uh, scalar now let me uh, take the standard uh, scalar and uh, we will fit on uh, the standard scalar on the entire data and then we will transform the data using the transform scalar uh, function so when uh, uh, i will plot both the curves the original data value and the one which is uh, scaled now we can check it out how the both are different now you can see that first one is between uh, 26 to 74 somewhere was there 76 and this value is between 0 to 1 so data is uh, normalized now we can take this part of the normalized data and go for building the uh, our uh, lstm model so uh, we will take out the uh, uh, the data sample that has to be fed as an input and what is expected uh, outcome i also explained how do we create the uh, sliding window based uh, uh, the data samples and that can be used to uh, train the lstm model you can check out that particular video i have given the link uh, uh, in the description and this will create the number of uh, windows uh, training and then followed by the validation uh, windows which can be used to uh, develop our model and then uh, second next step is to convert into np array uh, so and also we can check out the various size and format of these all the data frames as well as the uh, shape of the what it is expected uh, outcome now uh, this is the 1001 one is the outcome so there is a single value so univariate uh, model that's what we are going we are building now here 
and we can now take the sequential uh, model so let me let us create a sequential model and we can add the L lstm layer into that and uh, we can add two different lstm uh, layer now when there is a sequential lstm uh, layers we need to use the se uh, written sequence as true and suppose we uh, don't want to use further lstm uh, uh, layer here then we have to say it is written sequence as false and the next one layer is a dropout and then followed by the last one is dense now very important to see the shape of input shape what it should be supplied so this is the shape that is given uh, in the you can also check it out what uh, is the shape of the uh, input data sample that what we have created so it is the 14 input sample that are created and one is the unit uh, that is given so 14 samples along with the one uh, that is the input shape and what you are expecting outcome uh, in terms of the prediction that gives uh, is uh, shape one so that is basically one variable one so we'll compile uh, entire model also we can check it out the summary of the this uh, model so you can see the shape and the total number of parameters that are used uh, and then we will fit this uh, model on the uh, uh, training data so that training sliding window training data that's what we have created so i have selected very few number of epochs so that it will complete out very fast so this is how it is that complete training is uh, taking place now uh, we can plot out the both the curves the one is uh, the loss uh, that happened you du computed during the uh, training process and then the validation loss both these curve can be plotted with the help of plot curves so let us see how it will look like now you can see the loss curve is started with a little higher value and then uh, suddenly decreases after the first uh, epoch and then it will gradually decreasing the validation error start with the lower value itself and continue to become lower as the number of epochs are continued now with this one we will let us take a total number of uh, 60 samples and then perform the all the metric uh, calculation on the predicted value so let us say it is, uh, 60 samples we have taken and then we will perform the prediction on these uh, 60 samples now for the same these are the uh, predicted values let us see how they look like and very important uh, i will also show that so these are for predicted for the uh, 60 days okay last uh, 60 days now you can see they are not in the range of uh, 50 60 because they are uh, worked on the standard uh, scaled uh, version of the data so th therefore they are giving the value of 0 to minus 1 between that particular range now we need to convert back to the original scale by with the help of the uh, inverse transform so we will apply that when we uh, applied this inverse transform you can see the now the range of the values uh, which are predicted the ranges are uh, went up to the original range itself so that's the benefit of applying uh, the inverse uh, transform and now we can plot the both the curves the curve which is uh, actual value and what it is being predicted by the lstm now you can see this is the predicted versus the original value so actual uh, price values are shown with the help of blue color line and the red is the one which is predicted so there is a pretty much difference between that and that is causing a lot of error so that what we are going to compute in the next uh, metric values now uh, we will take uh, and store these same number of uh, days for the same number of range values the actual uh, oil values so we will call it as uh, actual y uh, oil prices and uh, next one what we are going to compute is the difference between the actual and the predicted value that is in terms of means uh, absolute mean error so that we can achieve with the help of mae uh, so after applying the mae method uh, it is going to generate a single value so let us print it and check it out what it is looking like so mae is between 1.4300 something like that so that's what it is the mae 
Now we can also compute the mean squared error. So that we can do with the help of a mean squared error uh, method that is applied by the scalar. So um, MSE and uh, let us print this MSE and check it out. What is the value of that MSE one? So let me run the MSE value over here. And this is 4.316. Now, and we can also compute the R2 score. And let us see how the R2 score will look like. So let me print it out the R2 score and uh, see how that the particular value. And uh, so we can now R2 score. So let me run this. So this is showing 0 0.24. So as I was telling, this is the R2 score is between 0 to 1. And if the value is uh, closer to 0, the performance of the model is not so good. If the value is uh, towards 1, closer to 1, something like 0 0.9, 0 0.85 or those ranges, we can say the model is performing better. Now, we can also compute the adjusted uh, R2 score. And here, uh, two things are required. The number of features that are what we are used because it is univariate. So the number of features is one and the, the number of samples which are used to compute the R2 score. So using these two uh, values, we can compute the adjusted R2 uh, score. Now, let me print that. Uh, so let me print that uh, adjusted uh, R. So I have called it as adjusted R. So let me call and run this. So you can see there is a little difference between 0 0.2429 and 0 0.229. So this is little less than the R2 score, but uh, it can uh, show you the uh, adjusted R2 score. Now, how do you utilize all these metrics starting from MAE, MSE, uh, root mean square error and uh, then also R2 score as well as adjusted uh, R values. Now, you can utilize with um, you if you have another model, you can uh, compute and build the another model and then you can tabulate both these values. One side MSE, uh, MAE and another side for the same uh, two different uh, models and then we can select the one which is uh, performing the better. So this is how we can select the different model based on we, when we develop the different model based on changing their parameter or the data size, etc. And then we can decide upon which one has to be selected. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. If you have any suggestion or queries, please write to me. And uh, thank you for watching this video.